And, uh, you know, a huge part of my life is right here in uh, New Jersey. I mean, my God, I know Naomi. That's all, that's all you need to know here, right? And um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know, I'm just so honored to be with you here. So I'm getting, I'm getting all these movies are running in my head as I see a lot of your faces and remembering different things and uh, experiences I had with you. So, so wonderful. I got a, I got a phone call to, uh, a little while ago, and someone on the phone said, Pasta George. It's like, Pasta George? I'm not Italian. Why is someone calling me Pasta George? I was like, oh, Manoj! That's what I said. And uh, so anyway, glad to be here. I love pasta. Thank you, Manoj, for inviting me. I always think, you know, he's the, he sounds like what would be the Winnie the Pooh of India. Hey, Tigga! <laughs> Anyway, I love him. You guys are lucky. Let's give him a nose right here. You got a great cast here. Awesome guy. The best. All right. So again, thank you for coming. So today, um, uh, I'd like to uh, make a charge. Instead of giving a sermon today, I want to give a call for action. You ready? Yes. You ready? You ready? Ready? Yes. Let's hear it. I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. Whoa! Hi, guys. I see I'm getting flashbacks every time I look at the audience and you people. Um, anyway, Jesus Christ gave a message 2,000 years ago. And Jesus thought, we, we know, even though in one sense the data is small, but actually Jesus gave messages on many important things, like forgiveness, um, uh, redemption through the cross, and uh, Jesus um, uh, made many miracles, and we know a lot of things about Jesus, but in actuality, there, if you really read all of Jesus' words, like from front to back, there's one thing that Jesus made as a priority. What was that? Right? Was it salvation through the cross? What, of course, was it miracles? Was it forgiveness? It was all those things. But really, the major message that Jesus came to give was a commission to do one thing, really and one thing only, that encompasses everything. And that is to bring God's kingdom. That was the whole purpose, right? And the stakes were very high at that time. I mean, it was crucial. That's why he got very mad. Sometimes he really got mad and scolded some of the leaders of that time because of the incredible importance. And if you think about it, Father and Mother Moon, their message was also epic, time-sensitive. It's got to all happen yesterday. You know, many times when I, I, when I was organizing events, I would go to a hotel and I would tell the hotel, I need to do it on this date. They said, oh, yes, Mr. Kazakis, we can do that next year. I said, no, 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 in three days from now. <laughs> Everything is like now, yesterday, right? And Father's like, build it now. So if you want to know God's heart, the core to know is to build God's kingdom. Because that is the core of the life faith. Therefore, it's very easy to get distracted with what? Distracted with gossips. Uh, distracted with all kinds of programs. All kinds of meetings. All kinds of stuff, right? And, um, you know, the, you all know Bill Gates from Microsoft, right? He was uh, speaking to some university students. And he said something I thought that was very interesting that kind of relates to this. And one student asked him, what did you do that we can learn from? Like, you know, some secret of success. And Bill Gates answered very quickly. He goes, simple. You have your core business, like what you do, your core, core business, right? And for him, what is Bill Gates' core business? It's not software. And you're going to say that. Not software. He said office solutions. That's what I do. And then on the periphery of human resources, shipping, marketing, you know, uh, custodial work, this, that, all these other things, right? And to save money and to make more profit, 
Companies do everything, right? They do everything. But Bill Gates said that is the biggest mistake. Because when you do everything, you get distracted with all the side stuff and you miss the core point, which is office solutions, in his case. And in a way, that's kind of our, our can be our situation too. Our core, we are here for a mission. We're here for a mission. It's to build God's kingdom. So, what if you knew that God's kingdom can happen right now, like tomorrow, right away, right? You know, if we read, uh, let me read from Jesus' words, uh, chap uh, chapter 16, verse 27 through 28. For the Son of Man is going uh, to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he, he will, uh, excuse me, and then he will re reward each person according to what they have done. And then he said, truly I tell you, someone who is standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So he said that to his contemporaries. You will not see, you will not taste death until you see the kingdom. He said, you're going to see it in your lifetime. Jesus said it, right? And if you look at our, our true parents, I mean, you can find about a thousand quotes from Father. Here's one in 2002. We will arrive in an age in which God and humankind live as one in the original ideal world, the world of heart. We will arrive on that age where we will realize that living for the sake of others holds greater eternal value than living for ourselves. The blind age of self-centered life will pass away and build another, uh, an other self, sorry, an other centered world of interdependence, mutual prosperity, um, and universally shared values for this purpose. Let us attain the correct knowledge about God and the spirit world. Let us uh, lead humanity on the correct path by testifying to the world about God's true love, true life, and true lineage. And let us build the universal family of heaven and earth and God's fatherland and homeland on earth. Let us complete the kingdom of heaven on the earth and in heaven through the absolute love, unique love, unchanging love, eternal love, and seek to live for the sake of others and offer the kingdom of kingship to God. And so, father and mother, too, are giving this epic, desperate, immediate message is now. It's happening right now. Get ready. We're here. And so, have you ever noticed he's always in a state of emergency? All the time. I mean, we are become experts in doing events in three days. I don't know how we do it. Just everyone descends and it all happens, right? Ushers and sound guys and everything, it all happens. Um, you know, I, I had one friend, he, he joined a, uh, a CARP, our student group, and it was in uh, San Francisco, and he came to an evening program. He's like, wow, it's so cool, these circles and arrows and happiness, wow. He said, come to camp. And he says, but I got my car. And they're like, you don't need your car. So he left his car and never saw it again, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> I mean, like, we have, like, everything is, like, emergency, go, go, go. And, you know, and Noah was like that, too. Wasn't Noah like that? He's like, I got to build a boat. And people are like, what are you talking? What are you talking about build a boat? It's on a mountain. He said, don't understand. I'm building a boat. Right? Moses it was the same way. He's like, get out of my way, Egyptian. We're going, right? Run through, this, run through all these reeds and, you know, armies following you. Go, 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 right? And uh, John the Baptist was that, like that too. John the Baptist was a revolutionary. And he had the guts to go against the king. Eventually it killed him. But all, all of God's anointed people were like, now. There's no time, you know. You have no time to put on socks. Just go, right? That's why I have no socks today. Anyway. <laughs> I had to come to church. Quick, not be late. So, um... <laughs> But what happened, everybody? Who's the reality? Everyone say hello. Hello. It didn't come in Jesus' time. Jesus said it would come. It did not come, right? And of course it has come, the age of the coming of heaven. But in a way, the world is not transformed, right? 
in an epic way. So was Jesus wrong or delusional? I don't think so. But so, could someone argue that? You could argue that, right? Was father and mother wrong or delusional? I don't think so. But could someone argue that? You could. You could actually argue that, right? If you're pragmatic. So did God's plan change? Was, is it all not true? Of course not, right? Did it fail? Or did the timetable change? The timetable changed. There was a window of opportunity that passed and the timetable changed. So, in Jesus' time, what did he do to remedy the problem? He did one thing. He had a pair of keys and he gave the keys to who? He gave it to Peter. He says, on your faith, on your faith will build my church. On that, on this rock. Why was... Why was building the kingdom of heaven built on faith? Because that's, we did the exact opposite to Jesus, right? We didn't have faith in Jesus. So therefore, to indemnify that, Jesus says, to have faith, you'll build a kingdom on faith. However, in this age, true parents have brought the keys to who? Everybody. Who said that? That's right, you're right. <laughs> they brought it to everybody. And what are the keys in the form of? They're in the form of a blessed couple and tribal messiahship to carry the role as a kingdom builder. So Satan would love it, would love it if we interpret this delay as a failure. He would love it for us to kind of wallow and go, oh, we're, you know, we failed and, you know, um, and disempower us. You know, is it all for naught? I'm just trying to just survive. All I can do is just show up. And so the real problem really is never the problem. The real problem is always a loss of hope. And to what's really possible that we can do with God and create miracles with in the midst of a screaming opposite reality. And we face that all the time, don't we? So, instead of feeling disappointed and disempowered, you have to have the confidence that you are the contemporaries of the Lord of the Second Advent. And you, with no exaggeration whatsoever, are nothing short of total, absolute heroes. You know, if you read Father's words, how, what is the essence of the Sungwa ceremony? It is for one purpose. It is to let that spirit know that that person helped build the kingdom of heaven and is a hero. And make that declaration, and that's the purpose of the Sungwa ceremony. So therefore, all of you are heroes. Because you're the contemporaries of true parents. And you can be proud about that. Because Satan would like to take that from you. Satan would like to take that from you. I have a very good friend. He was, uh, he was in the hospital with him. And he literally had tubes coming out of his head. He had a, a problem, like a stroke. And there he was, you know, just woke up out of a kind of like a coma. He had a very challenging life. He was divorced. His children are not connected. And there he was, practically, you know, in that situation, and he just looked at me and just cried, and he goes, was it all for naught? And I had this incredible moment where I, I it's very rare where I say I heard the voice of God. <laughs> but in that moment, I really felt I heard the voice of God, and to tell him, no way. I was like, your stand was glory. Your stand was in glory. And if you think about it, war heroes are the ones who passed away. They could look like failures, but they're not. They're considered heroes. So, how do we transform the world and build God's kingdom? Well, we're just a small number of people. We can't do it without God, right? We can only do it with a miracle. 
So, you know, it's not economic reform. It's not meditation. It's not doing peace projects. It's not trying to copy, you know, Rick Warren and Bill Hybels and, you know what I mean? It's just not us. Remember we tried doing that years ago? I tried doing that. I totally failed. Thank God we failed at that. Because if we were successful, we'd just be another one like that. And because we got good at it, we'd just keep on doing it. But I thank God it didn't work out. Because actually, true parents have a different message. There's a different message out there that's bigger. So, you know, so what is the kingdom of heaven? If, if Jesus is to build the kingdom of heaven, and that's true parents' commission for us to build the kingdom of heaven, what is inside that core? What's inside that core? What is that, right? Well, you know, I was in Los Angeles, and we had many guests in CARP, and Father was coming to speak. Exciting, right? And uh, so I said, we'll invite all the guest parents. So we filled up buses. We fed them food. <laughs> Just ate and ate, ate. Put them on. I said, hey, time to get on the bus now. Bring your flan, right? Anyway, so we just <laughs> got on the bus, piled the buses, went to see, and there was like, you know, every who's who, every like, uh, you know, assembly people and the sheriff and all the who's who in Los Angeles. And then, you know, everyone said, how do you do? Oh, yes, how do you do? I'm, miss, I'm Mr. Formal. Hi, I'm Miss Formal, right? Anyway, they were all there and, and having, you know, fun and whatnot. And, and then, you know, then the, uh, you know, choir came up and hallelujah. And everyone's hallelujah. Everyone's clapping and it's like, you know, spirits going up and then the lights go down and then this movie comes up and it's the Korean War and it's like all these missiles going so Reverend Moon came from the ashes, from nothing in a third world country. And, you know, Reverend Moon, you know, went in this hut and in this hut and then he wrote this book and we had this vision for world peace and then blessing and then, you know, 36, 72, whatever, and bigger, bigger and stadiums and, you know, Olympic stadiums, five grillion people and now it's Reverend Moon and then the lights came up and said, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome up Reverend Moon. And everyone went, Woo! <laughs> And then Reverend Moon comes on stage. And then it's like, oh, you know, it's like we have all these, I have, you know, I, I had busloads of people. And then Father went like this, you know. <laughs> he went, I think you remember the speech. Ever went to the bathroom and you made a really stinky poo? And it smelled so bad. But you don't mind because it came from you. And I started looking at all the parents that I invited. I looked at Father and says, I don't know where you're going with this one. But it got worse. And then he went like this. He goes, remember when you were a kid and you, you had a runny nose? You went, and, uh, and, and, and you know, sipped on it and it was very salty. And you didn't mind because it was one with you. And it got worse. It got, kept going. Uh, anyway. So then he said, why am I telling you this? He said, because God is a God of love. And God cannot distinguish love because it's one with God. So God doesn't know about love. Right? And that's why God invented Mr. Nakai. Right here. And then God can go, oh, that's what love is. Because he's got Mr. Nakai. Would you agree, ma'am? Thank you. Wise answer. So he said, that's why God created all of you. He created all of you because God doesn't know love unless he has you. And so then Father went on to say that what is the essence of my hundreds and hundreds of volumes of speeches? He goes, it's all in one phrase. Do you know what a haiku is in Japanese? You know Japanese? Haiku? Right? Like a little tiny poem, like one statement. He said, here it is. Here's, here's why God created Jupiter, Saturn, Mr. Nakai, everything. It's pretty much a big deal, Mr. Nakai. 
He said it's simple. It's for two to become one centered on God. He goes, that's it. That is the essence of the whole universe. The key to the whole universe. He said, and the apex and the zenith and the height of all of that is a man and a woman becoming one. Becoming one. That is the essence of the kingdom of heaven. No surprise to all of you. So world peace is, happens through God-centered families. But it's juxtaposed to, as we know, there's, you know, there's a 50% divorce rate. And many people know that. But what many people don't know is that about the, what, the other 46% to a small or large degree, are fighting, or even worse, are unconscious. Do you mean by unconscious? Just living life. Not a life that is extraordinary, like to blow you away. Like you open up your refrigerator and there's the Grand Canyon. Wah! Like that kind of life. What is that doing there, right? Like an extraordinary life where you're like, you know, that, that is just like incredible. Only 4%, according to modern marriage therapists, have uh, conscious relationships out there. So why? It's like the greatest joy is also the greatest pain. So family pain leads to really all problems. I mean, talk an hour about that. So all therapists know out there, marriage therapists, I mean, across the board, in all different disciplines, all therapists know that the way we observe our parents relate with each other and the way our parents relate with us from zero to 10 will be to a certain or a small or large degree how you relate with your spouse. It will all replay. There's a, a, I think the most important researcher in the 20th century is John Bowlby. He, some of you may know he uh, discovered uh, attachment theory. And the attachment, especially between a mother and a child. And he did a tremendous amount of research and totally changed our behavior, the way we relate with babies, and showed how extraordinary that connection is, right? Like babies, like, don't go, ha, ha, I want, you know, thinking milk. They're like, they're like red in the face and like their jugular vein is pumping. Wah, I want milk, right? <laughs> I mean, if you tell any mom to give a blank stare to their, to their like, three-month-old, they will cry. It, it's not until the mom goes, hi, Tula, hi, love, how are you? And then they say, like, ah, right? right? The, the, there is a, there's an interdependent relationship there that it doesn't exist with other relationships. And the person who really continued his work was really a hero of mine uh, named Dr. Sue Johnson, who discovered that that relationship, that same part of your brain, is in the area of husband and wife. So really, as babies are screaming for milk, husbands and wives are really screaming for each other. But we do it in different forms, right? Like one form is a pursuer or a fighter. What does the pursuer do? How come you're late? Where are you? Take out the trash. What's going on? How come you're with him all night? What's happening? Get home right now. Where are you? Right? And there's the withdrawer. <laughs> and collapses in and doesn't know what to do. So the, the pursuer is like what? The pursuer fell off of a boat and can't swim. And is screaming, I can't swim. And the withdrawer has got his two kids and he's on the 38th parallel near all these bombs and if he moves his toes, they're all going to die. So the more the person pursues, the more the person withdraws. The more the person withdraws, the more the person pursues. And why does this happen? Why does this phenomenon happen? It's because we have this silly little thing, and God made it for a purpose. In the back of your head, it's about that big, and it's called the amygdala. And that amygdala sees dangerous images and then turns off the executive part of your brain, which is logical, and just has you run. This danger, right, if you're eight years old and you see a lion eat a human being, you're like, whoa, right? Next time you see a lion and you're 30, you're out of there, right? Like, you don't logically think, hmm, I wonder if I should stay here or not. You're gone. 
happening is the amygdala is looking at images of how your mom and dad related and how you related with your parents. Replays those danger cues are replayed with your spouse. Have you ever noticed that your spouse doesn't make sense? Have you ever noticed your spouse saying the same thing over and over and over again? Well, guess what? You're doing the same thing too, okay? <laughs> We're all guilty, okay? So, these danger cues is really what's causing havoc and is blocking the Holy Spirit, is not resonating with the Holy Spirit. So the only way, brothers and sisters, is to really create a miracle. Miracles, the, what's the ingredients for a miracle? It's absolute faith when it doesn't make sense. It's absolute love when it doesn't make sense to love. And it's absolute obedience to true parents and to your spouse. Think about it. There's no marriage enrichment program in the world that has the idea of true parents. Why is that incredibly important, true parents? And what does it have to do with the amygdala and how do we heal? You see, what happens is this. If you hold your tears and just grin it and bear it, then you'll rot inside and eventually, boom, explode. And there'll be a time where you can't hack it anymore. If you cry for yourself and say, why God? And Satan's like a cheerleader in heaven. Woo, go George, right? <laughs> cry for yourself, man, I did that. You know, Satan's like, it wasn't fair what happened to me. And Satan's got you, right? So you, you can't hold it in, you can't cry. What do you do? Right? And what happens is people do one of two things. One, they get numb. And they turn off vulnerability. And when you turn off vulnerability, that's love that goes out the door and then it just becomes a practical relationship. Can you take the kids there? Yep, I can do that. Can you do that? Yep. You know what I mean? Because it's safe. We don't need to get risky with being vulnerable. Vulnerability is the key to love. There's no such thing as a soulmate. I'm sorry if you believe it, doesn't exist. You create love with your word, right? And so, um, so now what do you do? You can't cry, you can't hold it in, right? Some people medicate themselves by overeating, watching Netflix too much, right? And to avoid vulnerability, because it's very risky. So true parents are giving you the keys to the kingdom. What are those pair of keys? More central than the blessing if you go down to the core of it. And the core of it is when you cry for God and you cry for heaven, you cry for Christ, when you cry for true parents, and then take all your tears and let them flow out and redirect those tears to God and to heaven. And then a huge space opens up in you where God's Holy Spirit can heal and wash away everything. And wash away everything. That's why, you know, the amygdala doesn't understand language and the amygdala doesn't understand time. It only understands images. A little bit smell too, but images. And do we have an image? We have true parents. And what is it about true parents? You know, in the Champumagyang is a great gift because we can read about true parents' life from true parents, right? But true parents, for me overcame more emotional pain than anyone in history. I know it maybe not, doesn't sound intellectual to make an absolute statement, but I feel confident in making that kind of absolute statement. Nobody, nobody overcame, not only endured, but overcame with love. It's not that it was something we should be inspired by, but more repentful of. And, wh and what was it specifically? I mean, why do we have God's Day in 1968? It's because true parents overcame 
Mother had to love all those elder women. Right? Mother had to love all those elder women. And what, what, why? What was going on? Because Satan actually was able to claim the other, the other person, people that were possibly could have been in the true mother position. And father's heart knew how difficult that would be for mother. So he had Mrs. Che and, 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 uh, and her grandmother hold her up as a young woman. And, and, and then he said, let me hold on to my wife. You tell me what I have to do. And Satan says, oh, that's simple. So you have to love other women more than her and she has to love them and then they have to tell you, love her. Now that could take about three hours to tell you that whole story. I think we, a lot of us know what happened. Therefore, you know, in 1954, before 1954, no one broke the four-minute mile, like running a mile in four minutes. They said, it's impossible. Nobody can do it. Nobody can break it. So nobody tried until one person did what? Broke it. <laughs> now everyone break, can break. Not everyone. I can't. <laughs> I look pregnant, even though I'm not. Now people break the four-minute while because someone else did. But now true parents broke that four-minute mile. You know, for men, power and sex is temptation. But what's women's uh, temptation for women? Or what's hard for women? Jealousy. Right? We all, everyone's equally, you know, got stuff, right? But women have, and then mother became incredibly, she not only endured, but she loved those women in a way that separated Satan, and Satan couldn't touch mother. You know, by the way, mother and father's victory, it's cured cement. You know what cured cement is? It's solid. That, that's, that's history. And because of that, when we look at the image of true parents and know the details of that story, you can reprogram your amygdala and get healed by true parents and longing for true parents so that when we go through all these heartaches, we cry and cry and cry out to parents and we separate ourselves from Satan, create a space, and believe me, it's not George's promise, it's God's covenant and God's promise that the Holy Spirit will wash your soul. So therefore, um, so God's kingdom is built on family relationships. That's why we got to untangle the mess. And sometimes we think, There's, this is not right. This is wrong. It's not wrong. It's just history playing out. And God's expecting all of your MFT training to come into play with the person you're sleeping next to. Right? All that restoration through indemnity was all training. The real deal, you're sharing the same sheets with, right? That's why it gets messy. So the blessing is not a pill for the ideal, but rather it's a spiritual path to it. So the kingdom of heaven is not a place we're going to, it's a place we're coming from. You know, in your community, Harry, you have uh, Nancy Jubb, you have John Williams. These are some of the most important people in your community, creating healing and connection between man and woman. So now our focus has got to be on husband-wife relationships from here on out. So what do we need to do? We need to share God's love and truth and the marriage blessing to our relatives, to everyone. See, that's the why. The what is church. Who cares about church? It's that that we care about, is right, is creating, like making intimacy possible. So, so things, right, um, what really helps if we can hold each other accountable. That's, you guys, you know what, I love Kodan. I'm, I'm the only Greek man in Kodan. I love Kodan. I, I, I think we should study Kodan. They are awesome. And they have a culture called Horenzo. Girls, you know what horenzo means? Jap Japanese girls, right? It means it's an accountability system. And they hold it and they support each other. Holding, and that's why the, Kodan is successful, man. They're awesome. I love Kodan. That's why I joined. So, uh, <laughs> so God wants to pour down the Holy Spirit. 
So otherwise, Satan wants to cause havoc by us avoiding to be intimate. So when I was in Las Vegas, there was a big rally for all the pastors, and September 18th, we're going to have a big blessing, and 2020, and rah-rah, and rah-rah, and rah-rah, and I was pacing in the back, just pacing in the back. And then what happened was Kevin Thompson stood up. He was here last week, right? You, kind of, you know how he stands like this. <laughs> Kevin Tom says, well, we've done that before. What's going to be different now? Right? He's British, but he sounds Irish. I don't get it. <laughs> so, and because he's got a lot of gravitas, people, you know, like he's a very faithful guy. He's got enough clout to say that in front of 150 people. Like, what's going to be different? And I was pacing in the back and thinking, we got it. We got to break the conspiracy. You know what the conspiracy is? Do you know the conspiracy in the Unification Church? There is an incredible conspiracy of low expectations. Do you know what I mean by the conspiracy of like, it's just going to be the same, right? I mean, 100 and 430 people, I usually can bring like one person to church at a time, and that's like at my best, you know? Like, how am I going to be 430? So I prayed to God, and I got this inspiration. I was like, you know what? We need to combine three things together. Number one, we got to get the Blessed Family Department. Number two, we got to get ACLC. And number three, Tribal Messiahs to become one. And why is that? Because recently, I went to a church, and we took our Ilshim program. Instead of doing it in our church, we brought our kids and did it in their church. And then our kids got up, and man, they were preaching. I was like, whoa. It was extraordinary. They were up there testifying to love. Testifying. I'm telling you, there is no workshop that transformed these guys more than that. None. And then they started doing the one-on-one -on -one DP with a lot of these new people. You know, one-on-one -on -one DP right? No workshop, no songs, no soccer, no volleyball, no yummy food, just water and a, and a black book. And there has been nothing more effective like to get our, 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 our young people on fire. And then I thought, what if we did that, not only Ilshim, but did at the same time like, like marriage enrichment. And I talked about true parents in a way that that they overcame the six Marys. You know, my parents got divorced. I've got wonderful parents. They couldn't make it. And so I am personally frightened and scared, you know what, Les, scared of rejection. Scares me to death. So I'll always play it safe. Because I'm scared of that. And I can see, like, what's surfacing up in me is what I, I experienced. And then I realized that's why true parents came and had this victory. So I, they broke that, that four-minute mile. I was like, what if we brought that into churches and had 20 years and, and nurtured that instead of saying, hey, I'm showing up, there's a campaign here. And they're thinking, there's too much pain in your campaigns, guys, right? And instead of a campaign, it's like, it's like we're always there and raising and going to the kingdom with them. And we can bring 430 that way. And then we're building the kingdom of heaven, healing ourselves while we're healing other couples, right? You guys are lucky here in New Jerusalem. Nancy Jubb, John Williams, these guys are like Gatlin guns of true love. I know that was oxymoron, but you know what I mean, right? These guys are like, it's, you guys have these gems here. So true parents came on the earth to do it all. So the reason why it felt like a fire drill, didn't it feel like a fire drill? Go here, yes, build the Gibraltar Bridge. Yes, a hole through, you know, Korea to, uh, you know, Japan. Yes, right, uh, build a newspaper. Yes, right, it was like, go fundraising for 10 years. Yes, right, I mean, it was like, by the way, here's your spouse. What's your name again? I do, right? It was like, it was like a fire drill. You know, I, I don't even, sometimes like I would go to parent speech, I was so busy, I don't even know what they said because I was mixing sound with Roy Clark, you know? But now is the time. The father put his foot, fingerprints in history. And now, for the next 10,000 years, they can look what you did with true parents to cue them what they should do. 
But now is a time, true mother is now giving a simple message. Blessing Trab Messiahship. She talks for about 10 seconds. Go sit down. That was it? Go do it, right? <laughs> And mother did it. True parents did it. So we can, we can break that four-minute mile. So the campaign to 2020 will only work if it's something we do all the time. And then when the campaign comes, it's, it's just a connecting point. So we have to repurpose everything we do. Youth ministry, about God and sex. Sermons, about God and sex. Uh, workshops, about God and sex. ACLC, about God and sex. I don't know what you're gonna, how you're going to do this with True Rule Foods, but somehow fish, it's got to be about God and sex. I don't know how, but we'll find a way. Some way, GPA, it's about God and sexuality, right? All of it, everything we do. And you may think I'm being sensational talking like that. I'm not. That's what it is. The message of absolute sex. The blessed family ministry should not be the priority. The blessed family ministry should be our entire identity. It shouldn't be number one. It should be D all the above. That's what we do, right? So that's why we have to focus on the why. And the why is spiritual healing, and spiritual enlightenment through the marriage blessing. We've got to do the aftercare, after the blessing, so we're on the path, on the path. That's why it's important, you know, I always say, the Messiah cannot save a man. Messiah cannot save men. Sorry, guys. The fall happened from the archangel to Eve to Adam. So the opposite way is from Adam to Eve to the archangel. So that's why women, when we did the, you know, the, the holy wine ceremony, three-day ceremony, 40-day separation, the crucial thing is for the women to really fall in love with Christ. Fall in love with Christ. And only a woman understands how to be transformed. Ever seen a Beatles concert and the 16-year-old girl's going, wah, right? You don't see men doing that for, you know, a woman singer, right? And they're like, hmm, very good, right? <laughs> but women can, like, absorb a man, right? And so absorbing the true Adam and then being fortified and then, then a woman can transform a man's nature. Watch Rocky. Rocky's based on a true story about a guy from Jersey. Did you know that? Anyway, then a woman can transform that archangelic man into a true man. Does that happen at a, in a little ceremony? It takes your whole life. Right? It takes your whole life. That is the core of salvation. That is what's available. And that's what we have to give to at least 96% of the population that are fighting with this. Join me in prayer. Beloved Heavenly Parent and our true parents, we thank you, God, that all these wonderful brothers and sisters came here today. God, please, on that great condition that they came today, please bless them and anoint them. God, we pray for our senior pastor, Manoj Jacob, who is standing in faith with you. We pray for our senior pastor here for your anointing on him. And based on the unity with, his, with the, our senior pastor here, we pray for your anointing to come and spill over and, ca and cause tremendous, tremendous heavenly havoc and love. And we can run down the, the sidewalks skipping and blowing kisses to the world because we overcame all the pain, because true parents overcame all the pain, and live in a state of vulnerability with you and with our, our beloveds. And we pray, God, that all that pixie dust from all that your Holy Spirit can spill over and touch the lives of all the people around us, and so we can really create the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven. I report in the name of George and Christina Kazakas, a blessed your family, adieu.